trapped air in there, uh, especially around the nose, the ears, and the eyes are, are typically oh, in the chin because we're inverted here. Um, so uh, these are things to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, sometimes you can tap the mold. Um, this one is a little large, so I'm, uh, and, and I'm not really crazy about the way it's set into this toad, so I don't want to mess with it too much. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's essentially getting rid of all the, that trapped air. Also, air can be uh, caused by the, the manner in which we pour it in. If you pour it in too fast, then, the, then those, uh, and that level rises too, uh, too quickly and uh, traps air inside. So you want to kind of go slow with your pouring method and, uh, you know, try to... Um, Try not to allow any of those uh, air bubbles to get caught up. Um, if it was a smaller mold, I'd say slosh it around a little bit and then dump it out a few times. Uh, but this is just way too big to handle. Okay, so what we've uh, what we've got here is a uh, a clean, dry uh, container that we're going to scoop the one uh, section of the mold out with and dump it back into the reservoir. You want to make sure that this thing is as clean as possible because you don't want to contaminate the latex in the bucket. Okay. Um, essentially, these masks take don't take a whole lot of latex, so um, the majority of this is going right back in the bucket. I'd say about 90% of it, if not more. Got my bucket right here. I'm going to start troweling this out. Be careful not to uh, to scrape the sides of the mold. Okay. We're just trying to get the max amount of weight out of here as possible, and uh, this is the best way to do it. And we've got down to uh, about as far as we can get with the cup, so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our paint brushes, and we're going to kind of scrape out the excess out of the cup, trying to save as much of the material as we possibly can. And what's, what's going to end up being left behind is so minuscule, like I said, you're going to end up wasting more on flashing and trimming uh, than anything else. Okay, so now we're ready to dump uh, the excess into the bucket. Um, hopefully we have lightened this enough that it's not going to kill us. Okay, we'll just pour it out. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got our mold uh, set up um, upright. Uh, the mold is going to drain. There's uh, there's no getting around that. But essentially, um, the excess again can be saved into that uh, smaller bucket that I was telling you about when we first original you know, originally started painting in. This isn't material that I'd want you to uh, or that you would want to put back into your bucket. Um, it's contaminated and. Uh, not the best. I'm a little winded from picking this monster up, but uh, now we are in the final stages of the draining, so um, if you want to scrape this up and save it, otherwise toss it. Okay, so let me show you something so that you can see how much waste was actually involved, okay? The fill line was like here, and this is how much we put back. So you can see even with the waste how much was actually utilized. So don't get crazy about saving as much material as possible because, you know, it's, it's, there's going to be waste. Um, and you're not wasting as much as you might think. We're going to go ahead and close up shop for this particular mold until tomorrow, okay? Uh, the reason for that is it needs to sit overnight to dry. It's probably going to take any, a little extra time to dry because this is uh, October, and uh, we're in the you know the, the fall months, and it is a little a little cooler, um, and um, so um, we're gonna go ahead and close it out, and uh, we'll be back in the morning. As you can see, we've got a good color to the uh, the, the dried latex, um, so it's just about ready to start to, uh, to start to demold. Um, we do have a step uh, that we want to take care of just before we do that. Um, and I'm, uh, I'll go ahead and show you that now. We're getting ready for the demold. Um, this isn't a detrimental process. Uh, you can skip this if you like. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut a few of these uh, plaster bandages and we're going to create 
great structure in which our uh, mask can sit while we're painting. Um, and uh, you can see I'm wearing gloves uh, while I do this. Uh, these are plaster bandages. Uh, they're just four inch bandages. And um, I'm wearing gloves because plaster um, is extremely harsh on your skin. Uh, it, uh, it works on your skin the same way it works on latex. It literally sucks the, the moisture from your, uh, from your skin, so you want to make sure that you're protected. Uh, plus, it's just plain filthy. So, uh, I've got my plaster bandages cut. We're going to uh, dampen these one at a time fit them into place and uh, then we're going to have a nice structure to uh, have our uh, mask stand up you know uh, pretty much like these guys here um, they are uh, generally flexible um, but these pedestals that we built or that we poured um, keep them in the shape they need to be in and sit it, you know, seated upright. So it's much easier to paint something like this than it is to paint something like this. Hold it up. I hold the shoulder, I hold the chest. So, you know. We take our four inch uh, bandage. We didn't cut them to any specific length. I just wanted a, a general, you know, piece that I can. Uh, And there you have it. For me in my studio, uh, plaster bandages are like gold. Um, they uh, they're extremely useful, and I I seem to every time I turn around, I, I wish that I had more of them because I run out so quickly. Um, Try to make use of them in almost uh, every application to uh, to save funds one way or another. Um, sometimes they're good for making a quick uh, armature. Um, other times they're good for. Uh, uh, they're obviously necessary for life casts, which we do quite a few of. So I mean, they're just uh, there's a lot of uh, options. Um, you'll notice when you're doing this that the latex will sort of be popping away from the mold and that's because the latex will actually start to shrink a little bit. So there's a percentage of a shrinkage that you have to kind of keep an eye on when you're doing a mold, uh, when you're sculpting to begin with. I'm going to go ahead and create a strong border here kind of give it a, a firm structure to, to lay on. We've reinforced the mask with uh, plaster bandages. Uh, we've used uh, two and a half rolls, so uh, Nothing too detrimental. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Uh, we are about to demold our uh, thug mask, and uh, everything looks to be dry, uh, cured, and uh, ready to go. So uh, let's proceed. So the first thing we're going to do is apparently flip it because. straps on the, uh, the correct side. All right. Pop the first one. Pop the second one. Very easy to pop these things. Put it up on its end. Um, before we go any further, you're probably gonna be wondering what these uh, these holes are. Well, these holes were actually supposed to be registration marks. 
Uh, during the molding process, I was up rather late doing the mold at about 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't quite consult my checklist, and so those registration marks that were filled with clay were supposed to be was supposed to be removed so that the plaster would fit inside. I, of course, forgot to uh, to remove that plaster, uh, that uh, clay, and uh, thus leaving some gaping holes where my registration should be. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pry bars on both sides of the mold. We're going to just gently, slowly start to push. I'm going to force it. And you want to do equal pressure on both sides. I'm sure you've seen this videos before. I'll pop those out. And it looks like we've got a good separation going on here, so I'm going to tip this back. And the reason why I'm tipping this back is because I laid a level of plaster bandages down here uh, so that I can have the uh, support. And I want to make sure that. Uh, doesn't get crushed accidentally. It obviously weighs considerably less than, uh, than the rest of the, uh, the mold. So lift, gently pry up. But be careful when you're doing this. I have had my fingers caught between this thing several times, you know, over the course of uh, God only knows how many years. And uh, blood blisters are a fun thing, let me tell you. Shell come out the way I wanted it to. The mask, which is face down on the wrong side. So, um, before I go any further, um, what I want to do is um, I can feel that this is still considerably damper than I assumed. So, I'm going to hit it with some baby powder, some regular. Um, generic uh, baby powder. And what that'll do is that's going to keep the latex from sticking to itself. It's cure, I mean it's dry, but it's still tacky. So we want to make sure that, uh, that it doesn't uh, create any problems. Okay, it looks like we have a problem with the nose in this particular cast. 